Hello all and welcome back for the second episode of Nate's Infernal Travel Agency. This is a campaign where I run Baldur's Gate sent into Avernus for a few of my friends. I'm here to recount their journey and give my insight as the DM of the group as to how I set up, modify, and manage play for the module as best I can to provide the most amount of fun for my players. When last we saw our heroes, they had just been given an assignment to by Captain Zaj, namely to investigate the activities of the death cult known as the Dead Three. They have been kidnapping, torturing, and murdering, in true egalitarian fashion, all sorts of members of the citizenry of Baldur's Gate. Zaj would put the flaming fist to the task, but he suspects that the Bantham Pier family, a very high-ranking patriarch family, of encouraging Archduke Older Ravenguard to go on his ill-fated diplomatic mission to Elturel, in an effort to remove Baldarian leadership while using the Death Cult to create panic and urgency in order to expedite an election for a new Archduke of the city. This does present one minor difficulty, though. The matriarch, Thalamra Banthampyr, just so happens to be one of the other three remaining dukes of the city. This puts her in the top four most politically powerful spots in the entirety of Baldur's Gate. Not an opponent to take on directly, or at least without a Twitter account anyway. So Zaj has hired some outside help to go snooping around to see what they can find. The party is sent to the Elf Song Tavern, where Ami decides to book a room for himself while everyone else squeezes into the one next door. It is here they are supposed to meet an underground contact who goes only by Tarina. DM's note, originally the module says she's already at the tavern being raucous and gambling. I thought it would be better for both myself and the players to not have her there right away. There's a bunch of eccentric weirdos at this tavern, and I wanted to test out my NPC acting skills as well as let the team get to know each other a bit while interacting with everyone. Rassel and Ashen try their hand at some gambling with a few games of Baldur's Bones. Zolik is interested in the kitchen menu, Virgil starts drinking, and Ami talks to the barkeep about what the hell is up with the creepy ghost song. Oh yeah, Elf Song Tavern is called that because it's haunted by a ghost that sings a single song at random intervals all day, every day. Once everyone's had a chance to get to know each other a bit and talk with all the other patients of the inn, Tarina enters, loudly proclaiming that tonight's jackpot is definitely going to be hers this time. Ami joins the table as well, and he and Ashen and Rassel play a few games of Baldur's Bones against Tarina. She has a streak of good rolls, a little too good. After a few rounds, Ami and Ashen figure out that she's been cheating. They immediately, but not loudly, call her out. Never mind the fact that Ami has also been trying to cheat. Ami is of the opinion that if uh, your cheating doesn't work, it doesn't count. While the game has been going on, a song begins to play. It's not an unusual event, except that it's not the one single song that this tavern is known to sing. This one is different. Too bad nobody in the party speaks the language the song is in. Fortunately for them, and the plot, the barkeep does speak the language and begins to translate. The highlights include mentions of the Hellriders and the fall of El Terrell, both coincidentally talking points from today's meeting with Zaj. After the anomalous song concludes, the Baldur's Bones game comes to a close with Tarina attempting to make an exit without confrontation. The party pursues her to the door and manages to pull her aside to explain that they are actually interested in the information that she may have about the activities of the death cult that's been terrorizing the city. Tarina hesitates, unsure of the team's true intentions when her eyes look past them to the front door. A look of fear seeps onto her face as she pulls the party to a nearby booth using them as a shield to block her view of the newly entered patrons. As everyone ducks into the booth, Tarina points to the new group that has entered the establishment. From the looks of them, there are nobody to be messed with. In a hushed and hurried voice, Tarina explains that these newcomers are a group of bandits, pirates, and thieves. Her old crew. As it turns out, Tarina, the fine upstanding citizen that she is, was once a crewmate on the pirate ship The Uncivil Serpent. Then she was known as Rhonda Thunderbell, and was witness to a mutiny against the previous captain. She points to the largest, roughest, most mono-oculared member of the group. It was that man that led the mutiny and executed the captain. He is known only as Deadeye, and he is undoubtedly looking for Tarina, the sole uncollaborative witness to the deed. And she might have stolen some stuff off the ship when she escaped. Details. He will kill her if he finds her. She tells the party that if they can get her out of here, she'll tell them all that she knows. If they have to kill Deadeye, so much the better, so long as she can get out the door to safety. Indeed, Deadeye and company loudly exclaim to the entirety of the tavern that they are looking for an individual known as Tarina, and they are willing to pay gold to know the whereabouts of her. While Deadeye is speaking, he and his group begin to slowly spread themselves throughout both levels of the tavern. 
Thinking quickly, Ami conjures the sound of a scuffle with Tarina's name distinctly exclaimed among the babble, coming from the upper level. Deadeye motions for a few of his subordinates to guard the door while the bulk of the party moves upstairs to investigate. Standing up, Rassel jovially approaches the door guards and vehemently offers to have a scrap, then insists upon it by goring one of them with his horns and tossing another across the room. Ami, Virgil, and Zalik take this opportunity to escort Tarina to the safer location outside on the street, while Ashen uses his pyromantic skills to create a sustained and controlled flame on the staircase to cut off those that went up to the upper level and holds his position to support Rassel with his new brawl buddies. With the commotion downstairs, Deadeye and crew race back downstairs as fast as they can to see Tarina escaping through the front door. Two crewmen attempt to stop the exiting group with a pair of crossbow bolts, both of which miss. Ashen returns fire with literal fire to try and buy Tarina time to escape. With the sustained flames blocking the way, the men are momentarily halted in the turn of the staircase. Having finished his warm-up with his now unconscious new friends, Rassel turns his sights to the new challenger standing on the other side of the fire. Not one to let little obstacles get in the way, Rassel charges across the room, up the stairs, through the fire and flames, into the two men, and through the wall, into the alleyway between the buildings. With the new emergency exit to the tavern, the pirates quickly spill out into the alleyway. Rassel is a flurry of blows between his quarterstaff, hooves, and horns, pushing opponents back and slamming them to the ground left and right wherever he can. It's all he can do to keep from being surrounded. Meanwhile, Ami and friends have made it up the front door to the street and only to hear the wall-shattering tackle just around the corner. Zalik breaks off to help Rassel contain the fight while Virgil and Ami stick close to Tarina, just in case she finds too much opportunity in the moment to slip away from everyone. Zalik stalwartly wields his halberd, swinging wide arcing cuts and long distance thrusts with Rassel weaving around the strikes preventing flanking maneuvers. Together they force a sort of line of scrimmage, but slowly have to retreat towards the mouth of the alleyway. Deadeye pushes hard to get to the street to gain the space he needs to get the upper hand in this fight. He knows that once that happens, Zalik and Rassel will be outnumbered as well as outmaneuvered. At least, that's what he thinks. Falling back into the street, it looks as though Deadeye finally has the advantage he's been looking for, when one of his men suddenly erupts into flames. Deadeye whips around to see that Ashen had been slowly progressing toward the splintered hole in the wall, and has now come out behind Deadeye's group. At the same time, Ami strolls out into the street, towards the bandits. Both Ami and Ashen open fire with their spellcraft, Ashen's an incendiary bolt of searing heat, and Ami's a line of crackling energy. Combined with the whirlwind melee of Zalik and Rassel, only Deadeye is left standing, and barely. Coming to grips with the situation, Deadeye makes a break for it. Uh, DM's note, it says in the book that he fights to the last man, but that's dumb. Why would he do that? He's a pirate, an opportunist. The book even says he has more backup on the ship. He's going to use it if he can get to it, and Tarina knows that. She says as much to the party. They can't let him get away. In fact, they shouldn't let the boat crew off the hook either. They're all mutineers, and likely as not are willing to hunt Tarina down too. If they can take out Deadeye, they can surprise the ship, and there are some possibilities to discuss after that. Deadeye is running as fast as he can down the street. And I don't know if you know this about Rassel, but... I'm fast as fuck, boy! <laughs> he quickly catches up to Deadeye and berates him with a tripping attack while Ami pursues at a more leisurely pace, firing blasts at Deadeye in between Razzle's barrage. Okay, another DM side note. As a DM, I'm not about to draw an improvised cityscape. Instead, I represent the chase as a minigame. Using a blank battle mat, I explain that if Deadeye's mini can make it across the map before he's incapacitated, they'll lose him. Fortunately, Ami's sniping skills and Razzle's harrying attacks wear down Deadeye fast and he falls to their onslaught. With her pursuers acutely dealt with, Tarina thanks the party and imparts the information that she has to them. The word is that there's a bathhouse in a nicer part of town that the dead three cultists have been seen around regularly. After telling the team where to find this bathhouse, she proposes another deal. If they help her take out the rest of the pirates on the Uncivil Serpent, she offers to go into business with them as the presumably renamed ship's new captain. With the team's help and a little seed money, they could stand to share a nice profit from this joint entrepreneurial venture. What will our adventurers decide? Should they trust Tarina's word? And what's waiting for them at the bathhouse? Find out on the next episode of Nate's Infernal Travel Agency. Hey everyone, Post Credits Nate here. Thank you again for checking out the episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, tell me what you liked, and if you didn't, tell me what you hated. Uh, still a work in progress. I appreciate all kinds of feedback, and hopefully 
we can get the third episode out in a timely manner. All right, guys. See you next time.